Hello everyone, I'm Ash from PlayStation Access, and today I want to talk to you about a game that hasn't had half the attention it deserves. Visage is an unassuming horror title I stumbled on not too long ago, which has lurked in the dark corners of my brain ever since. So now I want to pass on some nightmares to you too. Previously on the channel, I've spoken about how Bugsnacks is actually a horror game, hyped up controls, psychological horror mastery, and hinted at the spooky sights of Hollow Knight. So it's probably about time I stopped trying to cast black magic on other titles and talked about an actual pure horror game intended to be all out scary. And oh boy, is Visage scary. That special brand of spare trousers scary that is weird and gross and disturbing all at the same time, made even more intense by the fact that it still feels so obscure. The hunt for great overlooked horrors to pass around, like trading video nasties or endlessly searching eBay for Rule of Rose, has long been one of the best parts of the genre after all. And this one feels even more exciting considering my introduction to it came from one of your own comments on the channel spotted around Halloween, so thank you for bringing this hidden gem to my attention. As a heads up, this won't go into detailed narrative spoilers. I am simply here to celebrate the deeply human horror of Visage in a way that means you'll want to experience it too. So let's take a look at why Visage is the best horror game you might not have heard of, and the timely reason it hits so close to home. To begin then, Visage is worth your time for its seemingly simple approach alone. I mean, it's just exploring a family home, that's fine, right? Taking a look around a nice living room full of family pictures and making yourself a lovely hot chocolate is the calm living sim we all deserve. Though this is a calm living sim with a relentlessly brutal murder-suicide as the opening sequence that's then followed by loads of paranormal occurrences after waking up in a pile of weird goo and hobbling out into a surreal, haunted house, so perhaps not so calm. Oh, and just to add insult to cocoa powder, that hot chocolate isn't quite right either. Visage really lives up to its title then, eh? Underneath the appearance of something homely and innocuous, there's something very wrong. A measured psychological nightmare begins to unfold, not giving you any real clues as to what it is you're doing here or what you need to do to get out. Instead, it's up to you and your character Dwayne to unlock the secrets of both the various residents and the house, living through fragments of old memories in the hopes of piecing it all together again. She doesn't even call me mom anymore! This consists of four character-focused chapters, featuring Dolores, Rakan, Lucy, and Dwayne himself, that each inflict their own brand of horror on your playthrough. From men made out of mysterious black goo, to a monstrous mannequin stalking the halls, to naked grandmas running wild through the house. Believe me when I say they really are… unique. The whole thing is wrapped up in randomly generated sequences that vary from one playthrough to the next. Oh, and of course, you are completely defenseless against this supernatural nightmare, no matter how tempting it might be to try and launch that sledgehammer at a ghost's head. It is a masterful tapestry of all things upsetting, a game that wields both an intricate, moorish narrative and downright horrifying set pieces in equal measure. Don't touch that. In that way, Visage manages to create something that feels like it taps into real human nature as much as real human fears. Undeniably, monsters are at their best when they represent something deep or repressed, and the ghosts of this house are each a manifestation of needs going unmet, desires ignored, vices given into. Each character further emphasises the pains of deteriorating mental health, perhaps their inner houses, as Dolores suggests at one point inner houses just as haunted as the one we find ourselves exploring in real time. This is such a brilliant little gem of a game as it does so much more than aim to scare through typical methods alone, sinking into tragic stories that are by themselves inherently horrifying, and inform what skeletons jump out of the closets as a result. Oh God! The horror here is a result of showing rather than telling, with a surreal shift in scenery or a scribbled child's drawing doing double the work as both engaging backstory and outright stomach-knotting imagery that comes when you least expect it. Some stories can't simply be told, but neither do we want to witness them. 
Yet in Visage, as with every other great horror work that has come before it, we have to look to push forward. And of course, if this whole dealio is giving you PT vibes, and let's be real, we all dream for a little PT in our horror, then you'll be pleased to know the game was heavily inspired by the chilling demo for the cancelled Silent Hills. Visage steps further into the shifting, uncanny dreamscape set up in the infamous playable teaser, doubling down on the stalking entities roaming the halls and the claustrophobic house they're tied to. But it doesn't stop drawing from iconic source material there, claiming the point-and-click adventures of Phantasmagoria, the endless searching of Frictional Games' titles, and the twisting narrative threads of the existing Silent Hill series as influences too, just without the mastermind dog pulling the strings in the background. <laughs> Interestingly, it also really feels like the perfect complementary piece to horror movies that came out in 2020 as well, specifically Relic, Host, and Anything for Jackson. Respectively, a sad pairing to Dolores' own storyline, an introduction to horror in the most mundane of spaces, and a deliciously creepy tale of uninvited spirits appearing when least expected. This connection to these 2020 titles isn't just coincidental, though. The heightened quality of Visage's horror has everything to do with the game, and recent haunted house horror in general, feeling like an eerie reflection of our situation over the past year, in yet another narrative trick that feels deeply personal. I resonated with Visage so much because I felt connected to this hopeless, inescapable house that demands you experience the same space over and over again as you slowly lose your sanity, reminiscent of that circular timeline we've all been trapped in as we've remained safe indoors, with the game perfectly capturing the juxtaposition of stasis and uncanny change unlike anything else. Visage carves out this unique space for itself as a contemporary mirror as much as a timeless destruction of our psyches, and as sad and as weird as that all sounds, it only serves to make the game that much more potent and lasting. Just like in real life at the moment, playing Visage is like haunting your own house, with this empty familial home soon becoming well-trodden in a way that makes it feel personal. Perhaps you have that same jumbo fridge, or a similar wardrobe, or even the same doorbell that Dolores incessantly rings while standing a few feet back from, like every contact-free delivery we have now. And you'll look at it all differently when stepping back into the real world. At night, once familiar shadows in your home start to seem darker, those empty hallways feel a few inches longer, and you'll soon be reaching to turn the light on lest something creepy emerges and chases you down when you least expect it. In Visage, the home is a physical manifestation of our internal struggles, with this central house holding every bad memory of the people that endlessly walked its halls. But as much as this reflection of being stuck inside as time spirals out around us feels appropriate as is, perhaps there's also something to be said about the simple horror of a stranger being in our safe space getting amplified tenfold in the current climate. Essentially, this all boils down to me saying Visage is really, really great and deserves more credit for its inventive and effective horror, especially right now. I think it's fair to say horror games rely on word of mouth to gain true notoriety due to the nature of often being low budget, and the very best ones start as whispers between friends that have a shared bonding experience over brilliantly scary sequences. Whilst Visage does undeniably have its share of features that remind us of its lower budget, though they're forgivable in light of its story, this Kickstarter title has since found a home with horror fans that crave an uncanny experience, passed on through recommendations and excited conversations that celebrate its truly maddening moments. I've always felt that discovering a truly terrifying gem, one that sticks with you and genuinely feels disturbing, is like finding the unholy grail, and so it's to you I pass on Visage in the hopes you'll continue its terrifying journey into homes the world over. Sad Square Studio has produced a nasty slice of horror that cuts deep into mental spaces that feel taboo to even talk about, never mind witness, and carefully eases us into this storied hellscape one sure step at a time. Its horror is in subject matter, as well as in timed set pieces that never feel frequent enough to dull their edge, in the constantly shifting and changing atmosphere that cleverly triggers paranormal instances at random, and of course, its proximity to our own repeating circle of time we are stuck in at the moment. For horror fans, it is well worth the time to check out its solid 10 hours of nightmarish exploration, an underrated collection of terrors that deserves way more attention than it's had so far. That is if you think you're brave enough, of course.
And there you have it. That was a little look at the vastly underrated Visage. Will you be playing this spooky game? Have you played already? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Ash and this has been PlayStation Access. Don't forget to subscribe for some more audio-visual PlayStation goodies and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.